Hi there. I've got this new crossbow, probably about a month or so ago now, and uh, I'm really liking it. I used to used to bow shoot quite a bit when I was younger, but um, sorry, mosquitoes are pretty bad today. <laughs> um, I used to, to bow shoot quite a bit when I was younger, and then a few years back ago, I, I hurt my back. I just, I don't have enough back anymore to pull my, my bow. Um, I'd like to get probably a lighter uh, pulling, pulling bow, but uh, it, it's so late in the year, I want to do it this year for sure. So uh, I thought this would be a, a nice way to get, to get me out uh, um, earlier in the hunting season, and i uh, been playing with it. it. Whoever did not come with a sling of any kind, so that's what this video is all about, is this, uh, this sling that I made for it. Um, it's a double cobra weave paracord, it's not true paracord, it is the, uh, you know, the crafty paracord with the polyester um, inner instead of the seven strands, but uh, it has, what, a hundred and something pounds of tensile strength to it, so I think just for a shoulder strap it'll do me fine. And then I sewed on um, one of them uh, Outdoor Products uh, little kits um, to make it an adjustable strap. I sewed it on to some uh, Uncle Mike's uh, gun swivels. So that's a uh, that's that. I wanted to show it. I'm gonna. I've got some more paracord ordered. I've got another project I want to do. I'm gonna do it in the exact same weave. Uh, so once it gets here, um, I'll show you how the uh, how I did the weave for this one. Um, it is the second strap uh, sling that I have made in paracord. The first one for my mini 30 is. Uh, made several years back ago. I couldn't tell you now how I made it or what the what the strap pattern is. It was one I, I found instructions for. It's got a couple flaws, but overall it's not that bad. Um, and then again, I just sewed uh, some, some leather into some hardware pieces and put them on the... Uh, the uh, swivels that came with the, the rifle. So, um, Just a fun little craft project I got myself into and uh, just wanted to show you that. So um, as soon as the other paracord comes in uh, we'll get to making another strap and I'll show you how we did the one for the crossbow. Okay, I want to show you one more time what I did with the uh, for the crossbow sling. Um, I'd show you on the crossbow, but uh, I had to send it back to the factory. Um, I'm a little upset about that, but I was, uh, last week I was tweaking uh, the sights, uh, trying to get it sighted in a little bit better at 30 yards, and uh, I can't explain why, I don't know, I don't know what's happening with it, but the crossbow started releasing itself. I don't know if the safety is failing, if the trigger is failing, a combination of the two, but uh, either way, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, I would have sent it back, but I'm, I'm a week uh, beyond, well now I'm two weeks beyond uh, returning it, so I'm, I'm dealt with uh, leaving it up to warranty, and uh, uh, truthfully, I, I think they should, but uh, I hope it is covered under warranty. I'm kind of at that mercy right now. Um, so anyhow, that's, uh, that's that. But what I did, I've got um, an Uncle Mike's uh, sling swivel, and I used two colors of uh, paracord. Uh, an olive and a camo, and I did a double cobra weave, uh, 
all the way down. I forget now what the measurement is, but I think it was something like 30 inches. And then uh, I attached uh, some of them outdoor products, uh, uh, repair kit type of thing for straps uh, at the bottom. And then made an adjustable uh, strap part of it here. And then sewed it back onto the other half of the Uncle Mike's sling, uh, gun swivel. So what I've got now is uh, I've got, I, I know I said I was going to order some Paracord. Uh, I was going to order from Paracord Planet, but uh, due to my weird work schedule and uh, time away from home, I, uh, I plum forgot. <laughs> I have got for this project now uh, two colors, um, black and uh, just flat out olive. It's, uh, you know, the Walmart uh, Paracord uh, Hyper Tough, I think is the brand here. Uh, it's labeled as a 550 Paracord, but it has 110 pounds uh, worth of uh, uh, working load. So um, that's what we're going to use. Uh, my friend Bob, uh, he wanted to know how I did this. So I thought it would be a nice, uh, nice idea if I made him a strap for his uh, H2O pouch. So it is, uh, he's using a Condor water bottle bag as his uh, H2O pouch. So I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to be strong enough to support that. And uh, I've also got off of uh, an old uh, utility bag of some sort, uh, took the, the straps, uh, the, the buckles off of it, which is going to be about the same idea as the uh, Uncle Mike's gun slings. It's got a nice swivel to it, and it'll clip onto his bag pretty well. He's asking for a 52 inch, and I'm just going to kind of ballpark it around 50 uh, of a strap. And initially he wanted it all in black to match his bag, but I truthfully think I'm going to get myself confused with six strands of black. So I, uh, I'm making a judgment call on black and olive for that. And I'm going to use, uh, for every inch of completed strap, I need a foot of paracord. So I'm going to get resituated here and uh, we'll get a couple going. We'll probably, you know, I don't know, get four, five, six maybe started. And then it's, uh, it's, it's really just a back and forth. Uh, it's almost meditative if you, once you get into it. And uh, uh, But anyhow, we'll, we'll get it started and uh, show you how it goes. Okay, so here's what I've got. I've got, uh, um, I watched uh, over and over again, I watched a video from Patriot Customs LLC uh, for rock paracord rifle sling paracord thing. So that's, that's where I got all my information on doing this from. And uh, so he suggested that it's best to to, to hang it up, you know, eye level, head level, whatever. So I've got it tied to the tree here just for purposes. Um, I'm starting off with the middle strand, and uh, I took the entire roll, that 50 foot roll, and just divided it up in half. And I'm going to go through the middle and pull all that through. And that, that becomes the middle set of strands for the um, for the sling, and I'm sorry in editing if it's going to seem choppy, but um, I'm not really a, any kind of expert at this, so I uh, am likely going back to, to uh, um, 
make some other references be before I go on again. But anyhow, that's the middle strand, and uh, I'm going to use the olive on both ends here. Uh, and it's not going to be divided evenly like like this one is. There's a kind of a formula for it. He had a 40 inch strap and measured off, I think it was 82 inches, with the short end of the cords on both ends being in the middle. Um, so I just took his calculations and figured it out for a 50 inch strap and come up with 105 inches, which I'll have to measure off here in a minute. I haven't done so yet, but I'm going to put two runs of olive uh, on, on each side here with the 105 inch side facing the middle. Okay, so here is my 50 foot bundle of olive and my 105 inch side here going to the middle and do the same thing, pass it through the middle, pull off the short end first, and I guess I should have unraveled the bundle. But I don't get a lot of tangles out of this, so that's what I'm going to right there. And a snag inside that one. Maybe we can cover that up. Should have done that before I turned on the camera. There we go. Okay. I'm not going to make that real tight yet because what we do with the short end is we come down to wherever our 50 inch marker is going to be, put the other uh, swivel on there and then bring it up and loosely put it in there. But before I do that, I'm going to get this side done. I'm Got all those on, and I'm going to take the two inside ones, which are the shorter ones, and they're sort of even, not quite, but sort of, and then I'm going to pass them through the, from the front to the back of my other piece of the swivel, and then bring them up, let me do this again, I'm going to get myself confused, okay, I'll do them one at a time just to make it easier for me, so I'm starting on the right hand side with the inner one, and I'm going to pass it through. Okay. 
and let that dangle for a minute. Loosen this just a little bit. And pass that through about an inch worth. And then tighten that down. And it's going to hold it in place. I'm going to find the inside of this one. Do the same thing without getting myself all tangled up. Yep, okay. Pass it through the front. And then back up to here. Pull it through about an inch worth, and then tighten all the all this down. So there we go. Now I take. Separates on my mess here so it doesn't get too bad. Okay. This is the long one from this side. I'm just going to kind of let it sit there for a second so it doesn't get too tangled up. And do the same thing here. off that side. Here we go. Okay. And now, we're all tangled up. Okay. So now, I'll take the black one, go over the two, and then the long one over here goes over that black one, and then through around the back, and through the loop from the black one. And then we'll pull all of our endless cordage through here. Like yay. And then pull that up tight. Like that. Same thing, we'll go over now with the black one under with the OD one and back through the loop. Oh, I guess it helps to not stand on it. Once you get into the rhythm, it goes pretty pretty good, and then just pull the black one tight again, There's some long run, put it under, and then three. Okay, once you get going with it, it becomes repetitious, but it's a little tricky getting started, and then, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert at this, so. Alright, well 
on, give me a second to get my, my knot undone here. Got one, one thing done. And if I remember right, without going back to take notes, so bear with me here. Then we do the same across these two now because they're already pointing in that direction. So go over, under, and through. working out your tangles. Yeah. Then over, under, and through. Thing on the back to the other side again. Over, under, and through. So I'm going to get tangled up again, I think. No, no, it's pulling out. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more because my battery died while I was filming that last little section. So I don't, and I don't know where it died at. So I'm going to do a couple more just to make sure I get everything covered. Um, so I've got a couple runs already started, and then as each, each, each full run, you crisscross over. So I'm going to take this one now, which is on the left-hand side, and go over the right-hand strand. And it's the same pattern back and forth. Because it goes under, get my little fingers here, there you go, and then pull it back through. Hopefully you don't have as many things to snag you up as I'm having down here. We weren't supposed to get much rain yesterday. It was just supposed to be a slight chance, and we wound up with five inches and some really heavy windstorms. So my ground is really a lot of blown over sticks and whatnot. And I tied myself in the loop here. Bear with me a second. So then we'll pull that up tight. That again, the black now goes over, green goes under around the back, 
and then through the loop. Like I was saying earlier, once you get once you get into your own little rhythm, it's easy to kind of get just lost into it. Um, I found it very meditative when I was coming home from work, working on it for the crossbow. It's just a nice little escape. Okay. And then... On the other side, black goes over the front. Green goes underneath it, around the back, and through the loop. Now, Bob, maybe you can see why I chose two colors, because it's just easier to keep up with it that way. Um, I hope that is okay for you. <laughs> Pull that tight. Black goes around the front. Green comes down, goes underneath it, and around the back, and then through the loop. Pull that up tight again. See now. Then we'll crisscross with the crisscross them again. I'm not going to at this time. I'm just going to stop here. But you can see how it's forming the cobra. And then on the back, you know you're doing it right when you start getting the same same pattern forming on the back side here down the middle. So I'm going to finish up most of this, and then uh, bring you back when we get down towards the bottom. Getting close to finishing this thing. I've got one mistake here, and I'm sure that happened way up there at the beginning when I first laced them in there, but I must have twisted the paracord when I laced it in and come from one side to the other. Um, I'm going to try to pull that out a little bit when we get closer to the end. But I don't think it's going to be a terribly big deal, but just be aware when if you make something like this to uh, pay attention to the direction your cord is going. I did not. Where'd you go? There you are. But still, we're just same pattern over and over again. This is a. Uh, Been working on it a little bit as I came home from work. Sometimes, I don't know, a couple, five or six little runs in the morning before I left for work. And so, uh, couldn't tell you exactly how much time I got invested in it, but probably two hours. For my um, for my own personal placekeeping, every time I did a run, if I had to stop for whatever reason, I always stopped with 
this side being the side I would start next in. That way I, I can keep up with my place. I did not do that so much when I did the crossbow sling. And uh, I spent quite a bit of time pulling back two or three runs and starting over because I got myself mixed up or lost track of where I was. Or, so. Oops, just like I did here. See, so if I do that, then I'm, I've got a split there. So i got to pull this back out because I wasn't paying attention to what I'm doing. I've been I've got this mosquito that's hanging out on my right at the edge of my ear and it's driving me nuts. So I'm going to turn the camera off for a second when we get down we get down to the end here and quit doing our little runs back and forth then uh, I'll come back. Okay so there's our top and we'll just run down the run of it here. All the way down to the end. And quite a bit of surplus left. Which is okay. I've got zipper poles to make and other little projects and stuff. So it's not going to be a waste. Okay, so now these, like I said, this is the top where we first started at and where we bound it in. We're going to try to pull on these some, which is going to pull. It's going to be a little hard to get going at first, but it's going to pull the, the loop from the bottom up, which is going to help tighten everything. Okay, see, so we pulled a pretty good chunk out of it, and then we've got it a little bit tighter here. I'm going to try to pull a little bit more to tighten that up some, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to pull this into it, and then we'll do the same thing with the ones down at the bottom. Okay, so... Now, this is the back side of the front. There's our front where we started off with the cables. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to pull these guys through. What I'm going to try to do is pull them back through around the... Um, anyhow, <laughs> around the ring here. And maybe come up six pieces of paracord to, to you know right in here. Um, I'm going to use my Leatherman to pry up each little leg and see if we can't get it through there that way, and then pull it back down again. Kind of like that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do most of it off camera because it's going to take a while. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing down about here. And then the same on this side. Same way. Uh, we'll cut off the excess at that point and uh, melt the ends in. But that should, that should be strong enough there to hold it um, with any pressure on it. And we'll do similar down here. I'll turn the camera back on for that on the bottom side. But it'll same idea.
okay, so that's the front end still. I've got them ran through six paracords on each side. I will probably do it off camera, but I'm going to trim it and then singe it down right in those little gaps there. And that'll completely take care of this side. So, heading this way now, I'm going to do the same thing with both. I'm going to bring the two black strands from from that outside edge and cut off a lot of that in advance, but straight as not all of these are as tight as they could have been should have been I suppose so there's it's hard to keep up with that part but I'm gonna wrap these over and do the same thing I'm probably gonna go in a good four or five or six that way too and then the same thing like we did on the other end with the green I'm gonna wrap them over and bring them in that way all of our all of our um, tag ends will be on the inside of the strap. Not that that matters because it swivels, but anyhow. At least they're all uniformed. Alright, so there we go. We are finally finished. It's a, it's a little wobbly. Some of that will stretch out with some use. And down here towards the very end, there's a few little uneven weaves but overall I'm pretty pleased with it. Bob I hope you are and then I'll flip it over here and show you the insides. Uh, take a black sharpie to those and that'll clean up. And same thing down here. Sharpie that up and that'll clean up. The swivel is going to work fine. Bob, I think it's going to be a good uh, strap for your pouch. And that is pretty much how I made my crossbow sling. Just a little bit shorter. So, I want to thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.